Day 12, Abiding in Christ and Fullness of Joy. John 15 says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. There is abiding an infinite joy to those who abide in the love of Christ. Continue in his love, bear much fruit, keep his commandments, and see your prayers against pornography and masturbation and all forms of lust be answered speedily. J.C. Ryle comments on this passage. To abide in Christ means to keep up a habit of constant close communion with him, to be always leaning on him, resting on him, pouring out our hearts to him, and using him as our fountain of life and strength, as our chief companion and best friend, to have his words abiding in us, is to keep his sayings and precepts continually before our memories and minds and to make them the guide of our actions and the rule of our daily conduct and behavior. We will never conquer lust or any sin if we have no constant habit of closeness with Christ, if we're not constantly and consistently going to him, leaning upon him, delighting in him. We will go elsewhere. We will delight in something else. And a sinful delicacy will attempt to fill the void in our hearts instead of the only worthy thing to do so, Christ himself. If you're not filling your heart with Christ, something else will fill your heart. Go to the means of grace, which God has actually ordained for the good of his people. Keep the goodness and teachings of Christ continually. In your memory, endeavor to have Christ's love always and forever in your mind and in your heart. Depend on his strength and not your own. For without me, ye can do nothing, he lovingly said. Now, what are the means of grace? The Westminster Confession describes most of the elements of worship in this section. It says, the reading of scripture with godly fear, the sound of the sound preaching and conscionable hearing of the word and obedience unto God with understanding, faith and reverence, singing of psalms with grace in the heart, as also the due administration and worthy receiving of the sacraments instituted by Christ are all parts of the ordinary religious worship of God beside religious oaths, vows, solemn fastings and thanksgivings upon special occasions which are in their several times and seasons to be used in a an holy and religious manner. And so we abide in Christ through the means that God has appointed. This includes reverent reading. We go where Christ is. We go to where his people are. Christ blesses the means of grace. Christ is present in the means of grace, including scripture reading, with the Spirit's blessing, including prayer, even fasting, and of course public and private worship, family worship, if we're doing it sincerely, Christ is present. And so you go where Christ is, in the means of grace, in the ordinances of God. And consider, my friends, prayer and fasting to weaken the flesh, to weaken the sinful nature, Starve the flesh by starving the body. This can be a helpful way to give up pornography. Let us trust in the Bible. J.C. Ryle says, The Bible alone gives a true and faithful account of man. It does not flatter him as novels and romances do. It does not conceal his faults and exaggerate his goodness. It paints him just as he is. 
It describes him as a fallen creature, of his own nature inclined to evil, a creature needing not only a pardon, but a new heart to make him fit for heaven. We have the powerful word of the living God in our hands, the sword of the almighty spirit of God, forged by the spirit himself. It doesn't flatter and exalt man, but humbles him from Genesis to Revelation. Man is fallen and weak. Man failed very quickly from the very beginning. Man cannot save himself, but is inclined to evil. Man needs to be mightily changed by an almighty work of recreation before he can even want Christ in heaven. Scripture by the Spirit makes man fit for the city of gold, as well as for grace and for glory. Are you fit for heaven? Are you preparing for heaven? Are you prepared for the great eternity? Will you deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow Christ until you reach it? Will you sit at the table of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 8, 11? Will you have fellowship with David, Paul, John, and Peter? Above all, will you gladly bow down before Christ, the King of glory, with love and awe in your heart? And regarding prayer, the Westminster Confession says, Prayer with thanksgiving being one special part of religious worship is by God required of all men, and that it may be accepted, it is to be made in the name of the Son and by the help of his Spirit, according to his will, with understanding, reverence, humility, fervency, faith, love, and perseverance, and if vocal, in a known tongue. As I stated on day seven about watching and praying, Prayer is the most important practice and duty for the believer. In spiritual prayer, your soul ascends up to heaven. Your heart meets the God, Lord, and Holy Spirit whom you love. Your prayers are brought forth to the Father, sprinkled pure by the blood of his Son, and taught and empowered by the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of grace, and of supplications, Zechariah 12.10. Your prayers are like sweet incense to the God of heaven, Revelation 8.4. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice, Psalm 141 verse 2. The prayers of the saints are greatly pleasing to God, and Christ will for never forget any sincere prayer by his beloved people. Great is your reward in heaven. Pray earnestly, pray reverently, with passion, zeal, and humility. The pattern in scripture is morning and evening, if not noon as well, kneeling or standing before God with godly fear and reverence. You cannot abide in Christ and remain in close communion with him without being consistent, sincere, and earnest in prayer. You will fall quickly into sin without going to him and his promises. Go to the means he has appointed. Forsake sin by his power because you adore him.